Maintenance will fall into two categories, keeping the rain garden working and keeping it looking good. Now let's jump into our year-by-year checklist. In growing season one, be aware of invaders like turf grass from your lawn or weeds that sneak into the basin. Here are some tips for year one. One way to ensure your rain garden achieves enough density is to plant fewer species in larger groupings. Be sure you have enough plants of each species to make it easy to spot weeds. And make sure plants have enough space to grow to their optimum widths and heights without crowding one another. For perennial plants, the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and the third year they leap. Good for you getting those plants in the ground. But beyond the plants, there's another key ingredient you've got to keep in mind. Mulch. When a rain garden is first installed, typically about three inches of double-shredded hardwood mulch is applied. It will take plants a few years to mature and fill in the garden, so applying mulch ensures the garden soil is covered to prevent weed germination. This also reduces water needs for young plants. The mulch will break down by about an inch and a half each year, so after two full growing seasons you'll be down to zero inches of mulch. But by this time, established plants should fill out the garden. Mulch will be a huge help in keeping out weeds and holding everything in place. It also amends the soil when it breaks down, increasing water absorption. But even with mulch applied, be prepared to lose a few plants in the beginning. A major rainfall could wash away seedlings before they get established. It's a good idea to keep a list or outline a sketch of what was planted, as well as know what the growing stages of each plant look like to properly maintain your garden and only remove plants which don't belong. Minnesota Wildflowers and the USDA's Plants Database website are both great references for familiarizing yourself with your garden's plants. Here are a few more quick reminders for your rain garden's first year. Plugs are often used to save money during planting projects, but these can dry out quickly. Don't forget to water plants, increasing the amount during the hot part of the summer. Even native plants need water during establishment. Regularly remove accumulated debris and repair mulch washouts. Wait, accumulated debris? This may sound unappealing, but remember this is a top benefit of the rain garden. Preventing this gunk from damaging lakes, streams, and wetlands is what it's all about. And not to worry, there are techniques and devices to make this cleanup a cinch. For rain gardens catching runoff from roofs or driveways, often the best tool is a shovel or gardening spade. Carefully shovel out any sediment, leaves, or trash, and throw the debris in the garbage. One of the challenges with curb-cut rain gardens is the amount of debris that gets carried into them from the street. Check with your city to see who is responsible for cleaning out the inlet or pretreatment device. For other types of rain gardens, maintenance is just like other perennial gardening. According to area homeowners who have had them for a few years, maintenance is only around two to three hours a month. Cleaning out debris from the rain garden entrance after every rain is key. So we're talking a handful of hours a month to maintain an established rain garden. Now let's move on to growing season two. Growing season two is when a lot of little things can catch up to you. Forgot about watering during dry spells. Weeds like thistles blew in. Mulch decomposed. Perennial weeds started to spread under the foliage of desirable plants, robbing the good guys of nutrients and water. Forgot to clean the debris out of the rain garden and it killed plants or doesn't look as good. Plants were selected that will not achieve enough density to ever grow together. Next up, weeding your rain garden. 